uh, Nagano knocked him out, though. No, he, he didn't. Know he won. He didn't knock him out. He won. And I was worried because I didn't think Nganu was going to be able to impose his uh, will the way he did. Because Cyril, mm -hmm. Ga Cyril Gan is a better fighter than him overall. Yeah, I know. I, when I was reading up and listening to it, that's what a lot of people were saying, was that Nagano had the knockout power. Yeah, the knockout so, power. Uh, right. Yeah, but the other dude had the more, he was more of a technical fighter. Yeah, so 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 um, Nganu was, think about Deontay Wilder. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how Ngano is. And then Cyril Gan, he can grapple. He can he well grappling and wrestling. He can he got takedowns, he got submissions, he got everything. And they was both in the same camp too. So at one point in time, I think Ngano left. But you know, it was it was love, you know, they 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 respected each other or whatever, but it was a good ass fight. It was a good fight. Okay. Word. I heard, I heard it was a good one though. Word. Yeah, so let me go ahead and intro intro this. Uh oh! <laughs> oh! New viewers, thanks for tapping in. What's up, everybody? Old viewers, welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I am your humble, gracious host, Alex Hobie B. Colburn. And I got my people with me. Ricky! What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Thanks for tapping Ricky in with me. Slick Rick Recruiter. <laughs> Thanks for tapping in. Um, back by popular demand, by the way. Um, I got some really good views from the last show. Um, and moving forward, it's 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 my honor to say that Ricky will be joining us full time moving forward. From all the reviews that y'all gave us or that you gave me um in private, it was it's a go. He gonna be with us moving forward. So man, welcome, bro. Welcome to the crew. Appreciate uh, it. Thank you, man. No problem, man. I, I appreciate the knowledge and, and, and expertise that you gave us the last time. So that's the reason that we're going to have you back, man. And um, I appreciate you, man, for real. I really do. No, I appreciate that, man. I'm just happy that, you know, you gave me the opportunity to come on and be a part of this. No doubt, you know, bro. I'm, I'm gracious for it. So, you know, I look forward to joining. I look forward uh, to some good conversations, man. Nah, you earned it, bro. You earned it for sure. Because like I said, you know, we were, we were in talks. Mark and I, and once again, Mark will be back. Um, he got some stuff going on, but he's coming back. But and then we're gonna run this three man weave to perfection. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. But um, nah. So we was also we were already thinking about bringing a third person on, and when you came in last time, you killed it. So it was almost like it was a no brainer. After I, I got the reviews and I got the feedback from everybody, it was almost like it was a no brainer, bro. Definitely well, I appreciate that. Man, no doubt. Thank y'all, everybody out there. Thank y'all. Yeah, no doubt. Once again, uh, new viewers, thanks for tapping in with us. Old viewers, welcome back. Baseline to go line, the illest sports podcast show. And, man, let's just jump right into it, man. What a weekend, bro. Um, probably the best divisional round of the playoffs. Maybe the best round of the playoffs that I ever witnessed. Yeah, um, that is for sure. Okay, yeah. And, um, you know, I want to just jump right into it. So, I was going to spend a, a lot of time um, today talking about the Packers. We were, but the rest of the playoffs threw a monkey wrench into everything. So we got to we got to dive into uh, the, the the total games because the the total margin of victory for three games was nine points. So the Bengals ended up winning by three points. The Titans won by th I'm, I'm sorry. The, the Bengals won by three points. The Rams beat the Bucks by three points. The Packers lost by three points. And then just that game last night was phenomenal. But man, great game. Really good game. But let's just tap, let's just let's just touch base really quick on the Bengals and the Titans. So the Bengals beat the Titans 19 to 6, 16. This it's gonna be their first conference championship appearance since 1988. Um <clears throat> and I think Ryan Tannehill really tricked off a great defensive performance by his by his defense. You know, so just just keep in mind, let's just let's just go back and, and walk down memory lane real quick. So Ryan Tannehill, first play of the game, he comes out and he throws an interception. And the whole entire game, um the defense had Burrow on a the run. They was causing havoc. The defense was causing havoc. And even though Ryan Tanner, he ended up throwing, throwing three interceptions, they still had a chance to win. And 
I should say, let me rephrase that. He had two interceptions at this point in time. They still had a chance to win. They was marching down the field um, with a chance to go up, and he threw another pick. And then, you know, Burrow put the uh, put the Cincinnati Bengals in in position for them to kick off a uh, to kick a walk off field goal. What were your thoughts about the game? And exactly what you said. To be honest, you know, I think both defenses actually played well. Um, Rick, hold on, bro. You know what we forgot to do? What? Oh. <clears throat> See, that's my bad. Right about the game. Okay, right here, bro. I forgot to do the So, <laughs> I got a Mike's Hard Lemonade today. I'm drinking a little bit light today. What you got, Rick? Man, I got a Tito's and orange juice, man. I'm going old school. Vodka and Tito's juice. and orange juice. So, wait a minute. There you go. As down. always, to life, health, and wealth, and last but not least, sports talk. Salute. Salute. Okay, my bad. Now we can get back to what you were talking about. Now we can get back to it. Yes, yes, sir. Your thoughts? So, so what I was saying was, I think it was a good game. I think exactly what you said happened, man. I think it was a, a hard fought game all the way through. You know, I think both defenses held up. I think, I think Tannehill blew it, man. You know, I think, I think that those interceptions at the end of the game and ultimately cost them the game. Yeah. Um, you know, I think once he gave Burrow that chance at the end to really make that drive, I just think that his experience in big games throughout his career just kind of shined through. And he, so, it's he so funny. That, yeah, man, it's so funny that we say throughout his career because he's only been in the league for – this is his second year in the league. And yeah. his – you know, some of his biggest targets – think about Jamar Chase, man. Jamar Chase sat out a whole year last year. He, he was supposed yeah. to be a senior – I mean, he was supposed to be his junior year last year. And he sat out a whole year – um, in order to um, be healthy enough to enter the draft this year. So this is his first, you know, of course, this is his first yeah. time playing in over a year. And this, they, 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 look, man, for the next foreseeable future, when it comes to the AFC North, I know you still got um, Lamar Jackson in, in uh, Baltimore. And, you know, you can never count out what the Steelers are going to do, especially because I know they're going to retool. So you can't right. count the Steelers out. I don't know what the hell is going on with Baker Mayfield or even if Baker Mayfield is going to be there. I don't think he's a good quarterback, personally, my, my personal opinion. I'm not sure how you feel about it, but I don't think he's a good quarterback. And um, so I think moving forward, man, it, it, with Cincinnati, with this momentum, this this could be their division moving forward for the foreseeable future. I absolutely agree. And I think it kind of go back to a little bit of what we said last week when we was talking about Dallas. You know, I know that Joe Burrow is in his second year, but Joe Burrow is winning championships in college. Right. And so, you know, and so now as he progresses into his league, he got that experience. He has that that know-how. And so, and I think you're starting to kind of see it translate over into big games, not to hit pro. But I think you're absolutely correct, man. I don't think nobody going to beat the Bengals for the next 10 years, bro. I think Baker Mayfield you know, got a chance, but I don't think it's necessarily because of him. I just think he has an excellent team. Around him still, yeah. But see, I don't even think I don't know, and I, I want to. I'm anxious, and I don't want to stay on this too long because we still got some other monumental games to get into. But um, I just want to know how you feel about Baker Mayfield because I'm not sure if the front office has as much confidence in him as he does himself. Otherwise, they would have extended him already. Yeah, that's true. You say what? Today you say what? Uh I agree with that, right? I, I think that I think that Baker Mayfield is is overly confident for what he provides to his team. I think that with the weapons that he has around him on offense and defense, I think his team was made up similar to how you see the Rams and how the Rams are performing now. I think he had a similar thing in Cleveland. He still has a similar thing in Cleveland. I think. Let me you know. Let me, I just go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know, I just I just don't think that. I don't think that they – I just think that now the Bengals have surpassed that. You know, he's still got Miles Garrett over there on the line. He's still got Landry. He's still got, you know, the rest of those guys. So he's still got a team around him. So I wouldn't count Cleveland out. I think Cleveland is going to be the team that's probably going to challenge them for the next few years. But I just don't – I just think Joe Burrow is that guy. I think yeah. Joe Burrow is one of those quarterbacks where – No, he's him. He is him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, he, he's going to be tough. He's going to be a tough guy to beat every time you come around. Now, I do want to give Baker this, this credit. And once again, like I said before, I do not want to stay on this long. But I, I just want to preface, not even preface, but give him this. Being a walk-on to Texas Tech and to um, um, Oklahoma, 
I think it served him well. Like you'll walk on onto Oklahoma, and then you turn around and win that win a Heisman Trophy. So he has something to to back him up as far as the confidence that he has. Right. Uh-oh. Oh, you sorry, right. Right. No, you went out. You good, bro? There we go. My bad. Sorry about that. No, it's all good. But no, it's um. I think that has something to do with the confidence that he has in himself. Is because he was the walk on at Oklahoma, and he ended up winning the the the, uh, the Heisman Trophy. But I agree with you, man. It's, it's going to be tough for anybody in that division. I'm just anxious to see what the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson does moving forward, um, and how they will be able to compete with the Bengals and 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 this young juggernaut that just seemed to be developing and blossoming right before our eyes. It's is 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 great to see, man. It's great to see. Sure, and with Lamar, it's easy. He got to learn how to throw the ball. Once he learned how to get accurate down the field and he can put up numbers throwing the ball, then he's going to be a tough one too. But Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, definitely got to get better in that aspect. All right, moving on, man. Rams beat the Bucks, 30-27. to 27. Um, The funny thing is, man, that game was so crazy because I thought it was going to be a blowout. Um, um, and the Rams did everything in their power, um, Matthew Stafford included, to give that damn game to Tom Brady. <laughs> and it was like when I was watching it, bro, no bullshit. When I was watching it, I was like, dog, the football gods love Tom Brady. Like he got a horseshoe stuck up his ass or something because it was almost like when something needed to happen in his favor, it happened in his favor. Um, the the fumble, like with the with I forgot. Mm-hmm much time it was left to go in the game to give them the, the opportunity to go down and score and actually to to bring it to I think it was to tie the game up yeah it was around I know they, they got the first score they got the first time they got the ball back it was like six minutes left right and I think they got it back again and it was around I want to say two and a half minutes maybe three minutes left. right and right they got the ball back the second time to go score with the fumble right and I'm yeah. just like, look at this shit man I'm, I'm thinking in my mind my weekend can't get worse the Packers ended up losing. We're gonna get to that game too. And now you've got Tom Brady that's in a in a um position to come back and beat the Rams. I was dreading at that point in time, I ain't gonna even lie to you, bro. I was dreading coming on to record the show on Monday. However, they ended <laughs> up no today. I'm I'm dead ass serious. But you know, they ended up losing and it made today a little bit easier for me to come on. You know what I'm saying? Because I, you. I didn't want Tom Brady to win another Super Bowl. Um what were your thoughts about the game? Man, I I thought Tom Brady had it. You know, okay. I was telling my I was telling my guys, me and my guys was watching the game when the score was like 27 to 6 or whatever it was. And I was telling my friends, I was like, listen, if Tom Brady get down 14 points or less going into the fourth quarter, he's gonna come back and win this shit, man. This is Tom Brady. Like, if they don't put him away, put him right. away, right. something is gonna go down at the end of this game, man. And Tom right. Brady is gonna win this game. Y'all gonna right. look up. And right. Tom Brady going to win. And they're like, nah, I know it's Tom Brady, but this went over. And I'm like, nah, man, y'all just keep on watching. Right. And the game started getting closer and closer. And then when he tied it, it was like, I, you know, I told you that he was going to come back. Right. But Stafford, Stafford pulled it out to the end. Yeah, man, he he did, man. And, and that clutch throw that he threw to um, Cooper Cup. Yeah. Was amazing, man. That was, that, was, that was amazing. And I was just like, first of all, I was, I was wondering – why the hell do you do a zero blitz um, with nobody over the top on a triple crown winner in Cooper Cup? Like, why the hell? And then you got to think about it also. On the other side, you had uh, Odell Beckham. But you do a zero coverage blitz? That made no fucking sense to me. And I'm wondering, like, why in that situation, I understand bringing pressure, but you got to have somebody over the top. And it was just like it was it was pitch and catch with with Cooper Cup and 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 Matt Stafford. And the funny thing is, a lot of people don't know Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup. They go into meetings together at six o'clock in the morning to break down film. Mm. Well, they know what's going on. They know what's about to happen. It's it's a simple head nod. Okay, he, I'm going back under center. I don't see anybody over the top. Oh, this is a fly route. All day long. That's exactly what happened, man. And I'm just it 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 was shocking coming from a Ty Bowles defense and a Bruce Arians led team, which are they're they're typically pretty um savvy and they're typically pretty uh fundamentally sound when it comes to shit like that. Mm-hmm. So it kinda it kinda took me aback. 
when that happened. Um, but nonetheless, I was happy to see it happen because I was happy to see the Rams move forward and to get to the to the conference championship game. My question for you is though, what do you think about Tom Brady and his future? Do you think he's coming back? Ah, uh, he's saying he's he's saying he's still up in the air about it. So I'll be up in the air about it too. But personally, I I don't see why. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, because the desire unless it's just a desire to play, and he just loved playing football so much that he just can't put it down. But anything other than that, you know, it's really no purpose. Anymore. All right, like, you married though. So let me ask you, let me let me go this angle with you because you married. At what point in time does Giselle have any say in this? Well, you know, it, you know, because it, it become a thing, right? And so it start off, you know, it start off with her just kind of bringing it up to you, you know, right. hey, you know, you've been playing a long time, our boys is older, whatever, whatever, and right. it just kind of be like something that she might say, and then the next time she bring it up, she might bring it up when she upset and be like, hey, you know, you know, whatever, whatever. Right, and right, then right. it just becomes like that pressing thing. And this is just speculation. We're not saying that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure, yeah, for yeah, just sure. speculation. You know, Right. But, you know, but it just becomes one of those things. And so it's not like a, a particular point in time, mm -hmm. but it's just like one of those conversations that like they've had a bunch of times. And now because, you know, you had a conversation so many times, now it becomes more important. So, of course, we don't know if that's what's going on with them. But right. the wife, the wife and the family play a big role in that because, you know, after a while, you know, at the end of the day, that's who you answer to anyway. So. Right. Yeah, and it gets to a point, you know, with his kids getting older, I'm pretty sure Giselle wants him back, um, spending time with the kids as they're getting older. And like you said, it's going to get to a point where, you know, at what point does it get to you risking your health? Right. Because he's not getting younger. Right, you're 40, you're 45. Right, yeah, yeah, so at what point does that happen? So um, if he does, if he, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, and what else is there left for him to do? Like, what hasn't he done yet? Yeah, that's true. Best best quarterback of all time. I hate saying that. Yeah, uh, best quarterback of all time. Um, but I mean, you got to call a spade a spade. It's the truth. You know, greatest quarterback yeah. of all time. Seven Super Bowl rings. What I mean, he's won without Belichick. What else? Yeah. Like you said, what else did he got to prove? It's, you know, if he if he come back and play Tampa Bay, I love to have him back. They already said they want him back. Oh yeah, for and sure. If he, and if he come back, Tampa Bay is gonna be a, a Super Bowl contender again next year. True, but true. You know, we just have to see because, Indeed. like I said, there's the only reason he's coming back is just because he want to play. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think the, the the absence of Antonio Brown hurt? Like, do you think it would have been a deciding factor in the game? Yeah, I think it hurt him a lot. Okay. I, I was hoping to hurt him against Philly. <laughs> but, ah. you know, <laughs> Word. Word. You know what I'm saying? I was hoping it got him a week earlier. But at the end of the day, man, he just didn't have enough weapons. Yeah. And so it's hard to put up a whole bunch of points and, you know, keep firing when you can only really throw to two people. God damn it. Good he ain't have enough weapons because I was glad that he lost. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad, hey. The Rams had the best team left. That defense, I think they're gonna be a tough out for anybody. But no, for sure. No, that's 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 for sure. That's for sure. If you anybody, got, you got Donald, and you, no, you good, you good, bro. You got Donald and Von Miller coming. Then you got Jalen Ramsey, the best corner in the um in the secondary. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough out for anybody. Uh, I do want to see Odell get his get a ring though, bro. Yeah, I, too. You know, honestly, man, I think Odell get a bad rap. I really do. Um. You know, like some of the antics that I don't agree with necessarily all the antics that he does on on um, on the sidelines and things. But the difference is, is when somebody else does it, that is not us. Right. It's passion. For right. Sure. But when they do it, oh, they're acting. When we do it, oh, we're acting out or, you know, it's, um, it's because they are troublemakers or whatever the situation is. It's always something. When Tom Brady does it, it's passion. When he when he fired, try to fire up the team, and when he cussing at his teammates and all of that shit, it's passion, right? Right. When Odell, but, when Odell Beckham does it, he's spazzing out. But sometimes it's a difference, though, because you know I, I don't think I don't think for Odell Beckham it's his play that make him get a bad rep. I think sometimes Odell Beckham just act, he just do shit that like attract he attracts attention. No, I get and it. it. No, no, I'm not. And I'm not at the end, like, you know, you out here dancing and shit between plays. You out here like. You, you know, you're making a spectacle out of yourself. But you and know what? Here's the, here's the thing. Okay, let me just push back a little quick, really quick. Okay. Because the thing is, I think 
I don't think it's so much of the dancing. And the reason why I say I don't think it's so much of the dancing is because that is a portion of entertainment within the game. Right. right. I think more so what it is is, you know, him throwing his helmet against the kicking net and the kicking net smacking him on the face and the incident that got in, that he got into. And I think where he crossed the line was the shit that he did with, when he got into it with Josh Norman back uh, a couple years ago, three or four years ago. Yeah, when he, when he lost his mind on the field. When he lost his mind, when, yeah, when Norman was still with the, with the Panthers. I yeah. think I think that was like the start of people looking at Odell and thinking of him in the in a bad connotation when they saw him doing shit on the sideline. Also, I don't think it helped him. I mean, it helped him because it catapulted him to a different stratosphere. That catch and that de- everybody deeming that catch to be the best catch in NFL history, and then also the shows that he puts on in pregame yeah. with his with his pregame rituals. When a lot of people see that not translate into the field, they're going to start nitpicking little shit. It doesn't matter what you do. They're just going to start nitpicking it and trying to tear you apart because they saw this catch. They see your um your pregame catch ritual. And then they see you not helping the Giants get a playoff win when you were there. Um, not doing anything when you were with the when you were with the Browns. And ironically, when you weren't with the Browns, when you were injured, Baker Mayfield's numbers were a little bit better when you weren't there. Um, Does the two have anything to do? Do they coincide? I don't think so. But it just looks weird. You get what I'm saying? When those two things coincide. Because he makes himself the spectacle. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you make make yourself the center of attention, people want to see you perform all the time. Right. And so... So when you're not performing or your team not performing, then you start to bear weight that you don't necessarily need to carry because you made yourself the spectacle. True. And so if he was winning Super Bowls and he was doing the stuff that he was doing, wouldn't nobody say nothing. It no. wouldn't even matter. They wouldn't I say wouldn't. he was a bad teammate. They no. wouldn't say nothing. No. But the fact that you're doing all of this and you losing playoff games and you're not – you're going eight weeks with no touchdowns and you 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 can't, you can't be on Instagram and in front of the camera doing all these things and then on Sunday – you're not performing. It's, you know, I don't, you know, I know that, you know, Baker Mayfield is debatable as a good quarterback or not. And that, and his dad kind of did him a solid, I think, when he released that tape. Right, right. All sure, for sure. He was over nah, him, nah, 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 nah. sure, yeah. Like, but at the end of the day, when the stat sheets came in, man, you didn't have the numbers to back up the persona that you put out. I think that he's a hard worker. I think that he's probably a better teammate than we think. And I love to see Odell win too, just because I know they don't want him to win. Right. So I would I would love to see Odell get a ring for okay. all, you know for that reason. But right. No, I think that's, some, fair. that's fair. Some of the hate that he get, I think he bring on himself. Wanted, I think he did something he don't deserve, but he he asked for some of that. Okay, that's that's fair. I'll give you that. It's, some of it is warranted. Yeah, because you coming out there wearing a two hundred seventy five thousand dollars Richard Milley. Yeah, like it, for what? You're in a yeah. game. Yeah, I get for you. What? You, I get you know you. what I'm saying? Like. Like it ain't it ain't like your team is in the AFC Championship game and you got on a Richard Milley. Bro, right. this is a regular season game. What are you doing? Right. That's true. You That's want to put on a Richard, put that mug on the Super Bowl. Not right, <laughs> right, right. Get there and then put it on. Right, for sure. For sure. Um the nightcap last night, and I'm gonna say the Packers for last, okay? Mm-hmm. Because I want to get to some, I want to really unpack that for a minute. Okay. Okay. Um, but the nightcap yesterday, Chiefs beat the Bills 42 to 36 in overtime. Bro, they scored a combined 25 points in a minute and a half. Crazy game. Bill scored with 13 seconds left. I thought the game was over with. I'm getting tweets. I'm getting all type of text messages. All the game over with, man. This was a crazy game. The game over with. My cousin hit me up like, yo, we got a new sheriff in town with the Buffalo Bills and this and this and that. And 13 seconds after that, Patrick Mahomes marched him right down the field. I text my cousin back because he didn't hit me back. So I text him back. <laughs> Not so fast, bro. And lo and behold, Buckner ended up kicking the um the field goal to put them to tie them up to put them into overtime. Patrick McGahorns marched mar- them right down the field. And then the Chiefs ended up winning. Bro, what were your thoughts about this crazy ass game, bro? Man, it was just greatness. Yeah. You know, you know, it was just greatness. Like when you know, when they got down, when they got down to the crunch, and it was a close game throughout. It was never like it was like somebody was about to just get blue eyed. Yeah, it, it, like, it was nip and tuck. Yeah, it was nip and tuck the whole game, you know. And so when it came when it became winning time, 
you know, everybody put on. Like that was that was probably the best football you will ever see played offensively on both sides of the ball. Right. And I think whoever would have got the ball first in overtime was going to win the game because those two teams was clicking in a way that it didn't matter who was on defense. You was going to see a touchdown. It was awesome. It was a great, you know, it was a great ending. I I thought that that route that Kelsey ran at the end when he ran that fly route at the end, I was kind of surprised that he was open like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big moment in the game. I think the key on him more. Right. The Bills definitely, I don't know, they blew coverage or something. Yeah. Like, you know, Hardman got to beat me in that situation. I'm not giving Kelsey and I'm not giving Hill. I'm not giving those. I'm not giving those guys those opportunities to make those catches. Right. You know, we go. We have to shadow. We got to help over the top. We got to do something. But we can't go zone. I'm sorry. We can't go zone, and we can't do busted coverage zone and let the, the star offensive player they have run open down the middle of the field. You know, with like you said, with seconds left in the game. So, but even even before that, bro, like they, I don't know what the hell they was doing when. He threw the little, um, the small slant route to Tyreek Hill, and Tyreek Hill mm-hmm. ran off twenty five or thirty yards. The first play when they first when they when they got the first the very first play, I'm like, yeah, what are yeah. y'all doing? It was almost like they was in a prevent defense and was like, okay, we're going to give you twenty or thirty yards. But hell, twenty or thirty yards for Patrick Mahomes in, in two six and no four seconds. Yeah, bro, you, and, and, and I had all three timeouts, so he yeah, was able to do whatever he wanted to do and call a timeout. Yeah, it was just poor defense. It was I don't know I don't know what the strategy was in that, but mm-hmm. I, I, I figured that in a situation like that against a team like that, like you got to pay more respect to those two guys. You know, Kelsey Kelsey and Tyree Hill can't make the catch. Right. If, some, if he finds somebody else down the field, then you know we have to take that one. But these two guys can't run open anywhere down the field right now. Yeah, it was but, crazy, bro. That that shit was nuts, man. It was. Um, it was sad to see Josh Allen lose. It was sad to see any team lose because the game was so good. And um, I think moving forward, I believe, first of all, the NFL is in great hands with young quarterbacks, man. Damn, yeah. man. you got Josh Allen. You got Patrick Mahomes, Burrow. You got uh, um, Jackson Herbert, Jackson. Yeah. You got some good shit. Oh, John Watson, when he comes back. He's John Watson. Out of sight, out of mind. A lot of people yeah. ain't even thinking about Deshaun. Mac Jones, you got Mac all Jones. Yeah, yeah, man. You got some the, – the, the NFL is in good hands. The game was absolutely bonkers, bro. And I was literally – I was literally tweeting every fucking 30 seconds within the last minute, two minutes of the game because it was happening that quick. Every play, boom, boom, every boom. single play, it was it was happening so quick, and just to see Josh Allen's face when they scored with 13 seconds left, the game, I, I just thought it was over with, and I forget the guy's name that was on the Buffalo, I forget the wide receiver's name, but who scored four touchdowns yesterday? Uh, Evans. Yeah, that's who it was. No, 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 yeah, I don't it was Evans. Uh, go ahead. Um, Evans, I think it was. Um, you may be right, but anyway, for him to score. I think, was. I think that was. I think that was his name. But it, you know, it, it was a breakout. It was a breakout performance for him because you you would Gabriel think Evans. I think it was. You would think of anybody, right? And you would think if anybody would have scored touchdowns or that many touchdowns, it would have been um, Diggs. You would have thought it would have been Stephon Diggs. Um, but it was uh, yeah, get, no Gabriel Davis. Davis. Okay. Gabriel yeah. Davis. So it was just it was it was crazy. The game was so, like I said, it was so back and forth. It was so it was so nip and tuck throughout throughout the entire game. I just hated to see it come to an end. I just hated to see somebody because I wanted more. So let I, me ask you this then. Yeah. Let me ask you this then. Do you think it'd be better if the NBA had if the NFL had the college overtime rule, where both teams get a shot and then they keep I do. playing? I honestly do. Then, you know, because that would have been a great game for that. Like, I if he would have got a chance, he could either score a touchdown and keep it going or not. Yeah, I honestly do, bro. I honestly do. And I've been I, – I was I was an advocate for that two years ago. Three, I was an advocate for that three or four years ago. I, I, I do think that they did a good job by actually, if somebody comes down and scores a field goal, then the other team gets to possess the ball. I do think that was a good caveat or yeah. twist to it. But I do believe that even if it's a touchdown, the other team should have a chance to possess the ball. I really do. And, that's, and then just see what happens. And yeah. see what happens after that. And then if it keeps, if it continues to go, 
I think they should do it just like the college rules. If it continues to go after, I believe it's two or three or three yes. overtimes, then you have to do a two point conversion. That's the only way that you win is with the two point conversion. Mm -hmm. That's what college converted over to. I believe it was this year. Like yeah. if, if it's if it's um, still tied after either the, I think it's either the third or the fourth overtime. Don't quote me on that. But then mm -hmm. you have to run a two point play in order to. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 not at the end. The next. No, I know what you're saying. After, after yeah, if you score a touchdown, you got to run a two-point conversion. No, after not even. The no, not after even like the second down. overtime. No, not even after the touchdown. I'm talking about in general after that. So, say for instance, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, I can see you. Okay, all right. Yeah. So even even if it's a situation where um, they score, say both teams scoring in college, and then the game is just tied. The person, the team who possesses the next possession after either the third or fourth overtime, I forget once again, they have to run a two point play. There's no more touchdowns. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Okay. What you're okay. Oh, so you follow me? Okay, bet, bet. But um, mm -hmm. congratulations to Patrick Mahomes. That was a great win. Um, and I think it was, you know, it like I said, that was an instant classic. That game yesterday was, sure. man, it was an instant classic. Man, I just, you know, like I said, I hated to see somebody lose. That game, but you know it is what it is. You still can't see? I can see you. I need to. <laughs> What's going on? Well, I can see you. I can see you just fine. I oh. need to uh, charge it. I need to. I need to put my charger in because it's saying my phone about to die. Go ahead. All right, my fault. Man. I'm sorry. All good, man. Because I can queue up these, you know, this information for these raggedy Packers that pissed me off so much um, from yesterday, man. It's it's. I mean, from Saturday. That was heartbreaking. I had I lost. <laughs> and I had some bets out there, man, and I ended up losing. That, shout out to Javante Brooks for, for taking some money from me. Shout out to Yori for evening up the bet with me. I was old showguns from Yori, but that ain't happening no more. Um, shout out to who all, shout out to everybody that I owe money to, man, whatever. Uh, you got popped like that, Al? I, I didn't get popped, but you know, it was it was enough to 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 make me shout them out, man. So whatever. <laughs> All right. But anyway, I'm my chair a little bit. I'm back now. No, you good, bro. You good. I'm back. Packers I'm ended, back. No, you good, bro. Packers ended up losing 13 to 10. Um the special teams, which was one of our Achilles heel for the entire season, gave up a pump block for a for a touchdown. Blocked the field goal. Um, Missed the field goal. Block? No, they blocked it. Okay. Yeah, it was a blocked field goal. It was a blocked field goal. Um, but you know, so we lost. I, I really don't necessarily want to focus on that aspect of the loss. Go ahead and, and just first of all, bef before I get to unpacking what I want to unpack with this, what did you think about the game overall? I don't even I don't even know who to put it on. I think it was a well played game. I think the Packers defense played a great really game. Mm -hmm. I think that the defense. I think Zadarius Smith coming back in his first game back. I think he looked good. I think that he was in shape. I think that they defense played a playoff winning game. I think the offense played a complete good. Okay. And and I think that because the offense played so poorly, they wasn't able to take advantage of the poor play from Garoppolo, and they let him stick around too long, and he came back and got it. Okay. Now, let's dive deeper because moving forward, $45 million, $44 million over the salary cap. Mm -hmm. Devontae Adams is a free agent. If you bring back Aaron Rodgers, that's a $46 million cap hit. Alan Lazard is a free agent. And Aaron Rodgers set up his contract to have this leverage to decide if he wants to leave or not coming mm -hmm. this upcoming season. Let me just queue up something real quick for you. Share the screen with you real quick. I want to queue up something. And it's a little bit of Aaron Rodgers' um, press, uh, pre, or, I'm sorry, post game conference. Hey, Aaron. Um... You know, you and the team have a big decision to make this offseason. Does the way this season ended in the last couple, does that affect your your thinking at all? 
Yeah, I mean, of course it does. Uh, but, you know, there's obviously a lot of decisions to be made. There's a lot of players that uh, whose futures are up in the air. Um, so, you know, definitely it will be interesting to see which, which way some of those decisions go. And, uh, you know, but I'll have the conversation with Brian and, you know, in the next week or so and, and get a little bit more clarity and, and think about my own, uh, my own future and how much longer I want to keep doing this. Real quick, let's um, stop, stop there real quick. Is... Somebody says, I want to think about how long I want to continue doing this. It's almost like they're, you can't have your mind there as a pro athlete because you're already retiring. It seems as if. That's what I got from this. Yeah, I don't think he's talking about leaving. I think he talk, I don't think he's talking about retiring. I think he's talking about how many times can he keep getting to the playoffs with the Packers and losing. Okay, let me, let me move forward because I think he touched mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. That issue of how long you want to play, or is it still on the table to finish career elsewhere? Um, you know, it's a little, it's tough to say at this point, Pete. Um, you know, I don't think it's fair to anybody or myself to to really go down those paths at this point. Uh, it's disappointing, uh, sad, and fresh. So I'll have conversations in the next week or so and, you know, start to contemplate after that. Steve McGargy. All right, what point did you know that you weren't going to have David blocking for you tonight? Just how much? All right, let me just stop right there real quick. So with what you just heard, what are your thoughts? Do you think Aaron Rodgers is coming back? Green Bay? No. I think he'll play another season. I don't think it's going to be in Green Bay next year. Absolutely not. Where or what would you – What what team – what team could you see him with? I could see him in New Orleans. Um, I could see him in Denver. Uh, I mean, that's a few. Um, I don't know. I mean, Washington need a quarterback. Right. Um, it's a few. You know, I mean, it's a few teams out there that could use quarterbacks. And I think if you went to somewhere like Denver, or if you went to somewhere like New Orleans, you could plug him in and you could make a contender. Yeah, Atlanta. You know, so Atlanta. So, um, but you say, but you don't have, you don't think that he's coming back? Not to Green Bay. No, I think I'm I think that fence, bro. Is I'm on the fence, and the reason why I'm on the fence is because of the stuff that he's come out and said recently, with how well the communication has been between him, Gooden Coots, and Matt Lafleur as of mm -hmm. as of late. As of late, right? Yeah. So if you would have told me this same situation. In the in the off season, I would have said he was leaving after this year. Okay. But but because of some of the praise that he and adoration that he has um, given towards those two fellas here recently, more recently, I give it I give it a 50 50 chance that he's back. And now I don't know if that's more heart over mind. It could be more heart over mind for me. It is. OK, well, whatever. It Shit. is. But yeah, it is. it's but I no, honestly, I, I do think I I really think it's 50 50. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion like a lot of people think. But you I mean, I, look, look at some of the reasons you outlined though, man. The team is already over the cap. They're gonna have to sign Devontae Adams. You got Lazar coming out. Here's the thing. You got they, a huge if, number if they, for Aaron Rodgers. So you can only franchise one guy. You gotta sign somebody. Be, I, and I would think it would be I think it would be Devontae who they're gonna franchise. Yeah, but I just I don't think that Aaron Rodgers really got anything that he that he asked for last year. You know, like as far as the, the complaints that he had, like his major complaints were that they don't pay enough attention to the offense in the draft. They don't really listen to his concerns or none of that type of stuff. Like, and I don't think that they really did enough to address that. I think well, that I mean, the team you got to think about though, Rick. Like when when these when these things were brought to 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 their attention. It was after the draft already passed. We got another draft that's about to happen. And he doesn't yeah. necessarily have to make a decision about his future today. That's true. You know I, mean, what I'm I, think, I think he may wait and see. But right. ultimately, 
I, I don't know, man. I got I think I think the Packers give him a good chance to win. I think they may give him the best chance to win of all the teams that we know that's available on the market. Okay. But at the end of the day, if Aaron Rodgers become available, you never really know. No, it's gonna be some people knocking. There's yeah. gonna be some people knocking on the door. Yeah, it's gonna be some people who got a quarterback that's gonna be like, you know, we'll send them back if you want to come here. Nah, for sure. No, nah, that's that's dead ass. So let me ask you this then. What do you think about the fact that he's getting ridiculed for only winning one Super Bowl. And the reason why I'm asking that is because throughout the litany of the um, the NFL, there's only been a handful of quarterbacks who's won multiple Super Bowls. Right. Set Tom Brady aside because that's an anomaly. That's never going to happen again. There's right. nobody in the NFL history that's ever going to win seven Super Bowls again. So for y'all who says, oh, but he's not Tom Brady, damn it, ain't nobody Tom Brady because ain't nobody ever going to win that many Super Bowls ever again. It's right. not going to happen. So we're going to set him to the side. You think about it. You go down just the history of multiple Super Bowl winners. You got Peyton Manning. You got Drew Brees. I mean, you got um, Eli Manning. You got Troy Aikman. You got Terry Bradshaw. You got Roger Starback. You have, I think. Russell Wilson, right? No. You got two? No, you only got one? Okay. You got Greasy. Brian Greasy. You have Joe Montana. And I think there's maybe like two or three more. That's it. Right. That's it. And then think about it this way also. Because for the same ridicule and shit that he gets. And yes, I'm putting my my, my Green Bay cape on right now. Um, for the same ridicule and shit that he... Or for the same... Um, for him being ridiculed the way that he is... You just mentioned one one person. Russell Wilson got one. Drew Brees only has one. There's several quarterbacks right now who only has one Super Bowl. I guess my question for you is this. Why do you think he gets put... I know the answer to it. I thought you want to hear what you got to say. Yeah, you know but, the answer to it. But why do you think he gets ridiculed more than anybody? Because he's supposed to be the greatest quarterback ever. That's what they say, right? He's the greatest quarterback, got the best arm talent ever and all of that. He wanted a great. Is that a lie? Yeah, it's a lie. The the greatest arm talent is a lie. Man, whatever arm let's talent. Dance. Whatever. No, no, no. Let's da- no stay, stay right here. Let's whatever, dance. Man. Let's okay. dance. Let's dance. Okay. Let's dance. Okay. Who has better arm talent than him? Patrick Mahomes. Arm talent? I think so. I'm taking yeah. Patrick Mahomes. He no. can throw the ball just as far. I think Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback on the run. I think he's more accurate on the run. And he got his angle. But that's to do all that talent. Stuff. Rick, but that's Patrick all talent. do that stuff too. Russell Wilson. Is it as good as him? Stuff? Maybe not. Okay, fine. Okay, all right. I'll let you right. have that, that he got the best arm talent. Okay. But at the end of the day, who cares? Right? It doesn't matter right. if you right. don't win the game. Right. And, and so you're not the best quarterback. So what you just said, you just actually kind of made my point. It's, it's, it's about, it's more than 15 quarterbacks is one to win. And he not one of them. So when you no, talk about the Peyton Manning. It's 10. It's 10. 10. So when you talk about the Peyton Mannings and when you talk about, you know, the Joe Montanas and you talk about those guys, like it's unfair to put Aaron Rodgers above those guys. No, I'm, because, I never said, no, I never said I did. I never yeah. said I did. I'm just talking about. But I think that's why he get the hate because I think that he's portrayed as one of, if not the best, ta- the most talented quarterback of all time. And I don't necessarily agree with, it. you know, I, I think I'm not a Packer fan. So, you you know, it is what it is. But I, if, if I were a Packer fan, I would be disappointed in the Aaron Rodgers era, personally. But, I would be disappointed. Okay, so I guess we can say the same thing. Would we be disappointed in the Brett Favre era? It's yeah. the same shit. You could, but, okay. but not necessarily. Because I think Brett Favre overall, I think Brett Favre was, I think Brett Favre, had a better career. Do you think he had a better career than Aaron, than Aaron Rodgers? No. No. Okay. Um, so here are the lists. Here's a list of people with multiple Super Bowls. Joe Montana has four. Tom Brady, seven. Joe Montana, four. Terry Bradshaw. Troy Aikman. Eli Manning. Peyton Manning. Ben Roethlisberger. John Elway. Jim Plunkett. Bart Starr. That's the list. That's the list. That's the list. Aaron Rodgers ain't sitting at that table. No, Not, okay, you know. So, okay, so with that being said, is he? Do you do you think Ben Roethlisberger or Eli is a better quarterback? 
Absolutely not. I don't think that's so. what I'm saying, man. It's an ultimate, but, it's the ultimate but think, game, but, though. But, you, but the question you asked is, why do I think he gets so much heat for it? No, I get that. No, no, no. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah, and we that's why it. I think he get the heat for it is because I think that he's portrayed as a class one quarterback, and when his team loses and all that type of stuff, he he don't really like to wear it all the time. Now, so what would you say about people who say Dan Marino is a class one quarterback but doesn't have any? I mean, like you said, it's subjective. But Dan Marino never really had the teams. Dan Marino had all the stats, though. Stay and right so, there. Stay right there yeah. for a second. Dan Marino never really had the teams, right? Right. Think about – and, yes, I still got my, my cape on. For y'all out there that's probably looking at me like, oh, he's on his – yes, I'm on my Packer shit right now. Stay with me for a second. Videos? Come on, y'all. What about the fact that in – Five playoff games, the Packers defense gave up 35 points or more. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, this is why I think, the, I think the NFL is the ultimate team sport. There's not one person, and once again, we're going to set Brady to the side because it looks like it's him. That right. he's the only person that can will his team to multiple Super Bowls. But Bill Belichick had a lot to do with that shit. Yeah. A whole lot to do with that shit. Um, what the averages are, I don't, I don't know if it was, if you would say it's 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever the situation, but it, he had a ton to do with that. It's hard to win playoff games when your team gives up 30 or more points. That's true. And also think about it this way. Brady never won a Super Bowl if his team, if his defense wasn't a top 10 defense. And so I look at it like baseball, right? So baseball is a team game. But the pitcher get credited with the win or the loss, and I think, and I think in football, and okay. I think in football, it's kind of the same thing. Like, yeah, it's a team game. It's the ultimate team game, and you need everybody to do their job, or ain't nothing gonna work. Right. But at the end of the day, the quarterback is the one to get all the credit when they win. So they should get the credit. They should get the they blame when get they the lose. Credit when you lose. The blame. And so, you lose. Right. And so yeah, the blame is the blame is, is a team thing because sports is all it's all a team game. So you, you know you don't you don't. Win, 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 that was a good one. Yeah, you know, one. you don't win or lose by yourself. Right. But when things go right and the Packers is undefeated, Aaron Rodgers is the MVP. It ain't the defense. It ain't the line. It ain't whoever. Well, he going to win it this it's year. A, it's the quarter. But you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, the quarterback you. because you. you the guy who led your team to whatever. All right, so damn it. Let, just, just let me just – all right, damn it. Let me just get – let me get my Packers shit off for a second, man. That's just on, what for, a, for a split second, I just needed to get my Packers shit off. I just needed to get my Packers shit off. Yeah, hey, y'all think – about your host in Jeopardy, brother. Oh, so that's what you want? That's what he about to be doing. He about to go get that Jeopardy bag. <laughs> hey, yo, coming up next week.